it is okay what we is we are observing is the its materials in function this is one other uh, capability which we have been developing is visualizing uh, ionic distribution uh, we can develop uh, the this kind uh, we can develop this kind of uh, ability to uh, analyze the diffraction data and then this is the some of the ionic conduct conductor observed uh, developed recently okay now today's topics that is high resolution neutron diffractions so benefits of high resolution diffraction I'm going to introduce some of the examples that is the, uh, how uh, high resolution neutron diffraction can be useful for the functional materials. Uh, there are several examples. That is the strain analysis in a limb and tiny symmetry breaking in two cases, and then extract precise structural factor in that is F in strontium selenium oxide case. Probably there's no time to deal with the 14 tesla magnet case. So this is the super limba we call, that is the, uh, the young modulus. Uh, that is a, a sort of the index of hardness of matter generally uh, becomes increased at low temperature. This is the temperature change and this is the young modulus. So it, it means the generally materials uh, becomes harder and harder at low temperature. So it is natural. But in some of the material, especially this super nimba case, becomes very much invariant, almost constant, doesn't change the hardness in wide temperature, especially near the room temperature. So this is very variable for if you want a very precise, uh, uh, what I say, machine or something. So it is uh, very much important. And we want to know why this is this occurs. And some of my colleagues observe laboratory XRD data for the limb alloy and no limb alloy. This is the heat treatment is a little bit different. But diffraction pattern is similar except this uh, strong black peaks. So it's uh, only a, a look at this, something like that. But the peak width doesn't change much. So laboratory X-ray uh, XRD could distinguish very small internal strain. Here, the same figure, laboratory X-ray case. This is our machine, new machine, the super HRP we call. This is the same uh, limbo and no limbo. A limbo is very sharp. No limbo is broad. So there is an obvious difference not uh, intensity different as seen from this intensity different but in addition intensity peak width is obviously different but even with this sharp limbo diffraction pattern we can observe broadening this pattern can be enlarged like this way to the peak and this is from this we can analyze the strain from the peak width this is the temperature dependence of peak widths and the converted to the strain. So strain becomes increased like this way. And the, this, this is temperature, the same uh, onset of the limba property, uh, like, like, like this. Onset of the limba property is started at 120 degree. And then we observe similar tendency like this. And then we measure amount of this strain and also magnetic peak intensity. So it is linear like this. Square of magnetic intensity is proportionally to the strain. So this is obvious. Uh, magnetic elastic coupling is the origin of limba. We haven't solved that the why this uh, this happens, but at least with high resolution can show this kind of the a sort of clue to solve this problem. The another example, this is this silicon powder uh, the, of super HRPD with NOVA. This is the also high resolution instrument, but the conventional resolution, that is the uh, relatively similar resolution with laboratory X-ray. So the 
sharp one is supercharged and the broad one is nova so enlarge it is something like that so the nova black peak is very broad but this is very high intensity machine but with using this very sharp peak we can look at very precisely the change of the shape of black peak something like uh, this is a, a retrovert fitting of a silicon diffraction pattern the pattern is very uh, very uh, simple shape and symmetric and we can uh, what i say extract more precise information from this sharp peak this is one example to detect small symmetry breaking in lead cobalt oxide only by high resolution instrument here this is the despacing. Uh, this is the splitting of a peak. That is the that is the like uh, first evidence observation of simultaneous charges disproportionation of lead and cobalt. And then with normal instrument like uh, this is a spring eight with wavelengths of 0 0.42. It is a little broad. This is uh, similar to the ordinary particle fragment of uh, laboratory X-ray or ordinary, uh, what I say, neutron diffractometer. So it's, a, it's essentially necessary to detect this kind of splitting like this. This is another example, like a symmetry breaking on onset of heteroelectricity. This material, the, the uh, like uh, famous, like the quantum paraelectricity uh, appears. But by changing the isotope uh, O16 to the O18, uh, oxygen to change to the uh, isotope, and quantum paraelectricity disappears, and the onset of ferroelectrics appears. So a sort of two-step step transition. Uh, the people wants to, especially Professor Noda wants to solve this, the, why this happened, and then continue to this kind of study with the hiring, uh, with using high observe is splitting the peak for the first time but for 222 peak uh, there's no splitting so this we can solve the possibility we can uh, confine this possibility of space like this way this is a different example uh, reliable structure factor uh, can be extracted and then that is the uh, result in uh, finding a, a new new finding. And then this is the strontium resin oxide. This is one of the uh, cubic ferromagnetic material. And then in uh, onset of ferromagnet, ferromagnet, and the bond expand as small as 0 0.0005 Ohmstrom on TC. And something, this is the ordinary high resolution particle work mirror, and this is the temperature dependence, and this is the bond length. So data are scattered, and so it is very difficult to detect this kind of phase transition. But with super HRP with the highest resolution, our bond lengths obviously detected that 0 0.0005 Ohmstrom, it is possible. It can be compared with other material like uh, lanthanum manganese oxide. It's quickly shortened on onset of magnet, magnet transition. Okay, I will start talking about a different subject uh, that I'm belonging now. And the, in CSNS, Chinese pollution neutron source facility started uh, delivering neutron beam uh, four years ago now reached to the 100 kilowatt. That was the highest uh, 20 years ago uh, in the world. And now four instruments has been uh, started. And uh, recently, this year, a proposal, this is a list of proposal for the only four, uh, three in. So it's almost a rise, subscribed. I mean, huge demands is already obvious. This is the people, and uh, here is the 2017. So this is the instrument suit of CSNS, Chinese Pulse Neutron Source. Already built, and uh, this is the force that the uh, recently started in uh, the Actually, the photos get briefly. 
uh, this year in May, it started. And that is total uh, high resolution. So for short and medium range, those kind of uh, material can be studied. So it means uh, crystal structure information is required by users. That means the read about analysis can give you uh, precise structure information. And also, uh, once, uh, users want a real space atomic load structure, that is pair distribution structure, all together is possible. So very sharp to give you read analysis and very strong to give you a pair distribution function analysis. And the target of separatory and the CSNS is always upgrading or training and improving facility. And then target replacement is going on, something like uh, successfully disassemble, transfer, and what remote. This kind of accumulation of technique is maintenance technique is very, very important. And this is the continuation of that kind. And then test of waiting process, zero zirconium coated uh, tungsten target. Uh, they are going to upgrade. Later, I will talk that they are going to upgrade. Now it is 100 kilowatt, but going up to the 500 kilowatt. This is for the first time in the world. Uh, the world other facility, SNS in U US, and then uh, JPARC in Japan, they are using a mercury liquid target, but they are CSNS people are using a solid target instead. So this is a, they have, uh, let's say, many development things. So this, they are continuing to do so. Seven uh, instrument are under construction. So this is a red uh, seven instrument in this year, next year, in two years, this is very quick. So it's very quickly, and uh, one of the characteristics of Chinese, uh, what I say, policy is to quickly do that, like uh, within the, what I say, planned schedule. And this is, those are mainly cooperated instruments. That means the, not only CSNA, but together with the university or institute outside. For example, high resolution chopper spectrometer, that is inelastic neutron scattering, that with, with the Sun Yat-sen University, that will start being uh, next year. And engineering diffractometer on the material gene issue that is next year. High resolution that is the Miaopin uh, and, and then together with the Beijing University in Shenzhen uh, campus. And that will start in two years. So five instruments will be started in uh, before 2022. So these are all under construction. So building, new buildings are almost completed, uh, completed and some of the shielding is uh, completed. And this is the other, uh, oh, sorry, the, these are Chinese and the, these are uh, going on. Shielding, uh, beamline shielding is uh, under construction. So in addition, age plan uh, instrument for phase two, uh, phase two is already approved and then under designing now. So I'm involved in the designing, uh, helping them to design new, new these kind of instruments. So this is the landscape of separation neutron opportunity in the world, um, mainly in Asia. This is JPAC that will be uh, highest intensity in in couple of years and then keep for 10 years. And then uh, now we are discussing about upgrade and having a second target station. And CSNS is much more quickly increasing intensity and number of beam lines like, like this, quick, very quickly. Now it is here in 10 times in a couple of years or several years, and then going up. And then probably there is a technological probably uh, challenge here and then going up here and then we, we don't know what, what to do after that. And this is the yes, Europeans, and then they will uh, start use a program and then reach the num highest number of instruments, uh, at least in two megawatt in tw uh, by two, 2027, and then going up, possibly up the intensity and number of being lines. 
ISIS is a continuous reliable operation these years, and then they uh, recently announced that they will start the uh, second ISIS II construction, but detail is not, uh, what I say, known as yet, but they have already funded to study, uh, uh, what I say, funded to study the future. Uh, Europe, uh, US, they have SNS, they have already designed and started, as uh, they think about the uh, SNS target station to possibly deriving beam in the, uh, between 2030 and 2035. And then uh, some of the completion uh, will be probably after 2000, before the 2040. So this is a summary. High resolution neutron refraction can give valuable information in function materials. In some cases, it is not possible with low resolution diffraction mirrors. CSNS has been operated in uh, four years, have uh, operated for four years and reached already 100 kilowatt. At CSNS, 11 instruments will be ready by 2023. CSNS 2's uh, next stage has started already to upgrade to the 500 kilowatt, that is five times in short time with additional eight additional instruments. Thank you very much. That's all my talk. Thank you, Professor Kamiyama. Very nice presentation, very inspiring. You know that neutrons are very powerful tools for characterizing materials, especially for light atoms such as lithium. And there are also many applications using neutrons, and one of them is the high resolution powder diffractor matter, where uh, it's also complementary to the use of uh, X ray as the wave. But Unfortunately, uh, not many people know about this technology, especially for the younger generation. So we are very grateful for the explanation from Professor Kamiyama, who has given a detailed explanation of the high resolution neutron diffractor matter. And then uh, we'll have Q&A for participants who want to ask questions. Please raise your hands using the Zoom feature to ask directly to the speaker. Or you can write down uh, the question in the chat column, and I will read it for you. Please. So may I have a question? So, okay, oh, uh, Professor Ivy. Yes. Please. Yeah, Makashi, I, yeah, I really enjoy your, you know, your progress. Actually, I think uh, you make the similar uh, um, uh, progress like when uh, you started with JPA, right? Exactly. Uh, you develop yeah. the H, uh, HRPD, and then finally you develop SICA, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, and then now what you are developing in uh, in uh, China exploration source, mm -hmm. uh, what is uh, uh, this is special for uh, for the battery material or just for general of the uh, uh, the, the, the just general like HRPD, yeah. That is my question. And the second is, uh, in comparison with uh, what you already have in in Japan, what what is the the advantages or what is the uh, well co comparable in in what what kind? Yeah. And the third, the third, the third one, it's uh, well, what other information we can get besides the structure and then uh, the with the operando? Yes. Uh, is that uh, possible also? Uh, about the uh, when the battery is uh, during cycle, yeah, that is uh, so. Sometimes it will will uh, decay, will destroy the material. So how can how can we we combine not only the structure but this is the with uh, imaging? Mm -hmm. So it is you don't need to open and, and what is look like, but yeah, of course, from refraction is just structure. Okay, thank you. Okay, so. Uh, what I say, as for the HRPD, like uh, here, uh, you, you know, Miao Pin, uh, he is a leading person to constructing the high resolution para, but the, the design is basically uh, between uh, Super HRPD and the Spike. Uh, like, um, but they probably going to much more higher resolution than Spike and then keep the intensity. So that is promising in that sense. And the and the experimental hole is very large. That is probably flexible in that sense. 
And the second thing, uh, I think uh, the basically similar instrument, but uh, uh, there is a different choice of instrument. So uh, opportunity uh, is something like uh, neutral opportunity is limited worldwide. So I show the landscape in worldwide, and the number of uh, neutron opportunity decreasing in Europe, and then they are uh, also thinking about the small neutron sources, and also Japan is thinking about the small neutron sources worldwide. So possibly neutron opportunity is increasing. So China is the uh, special uh, neutron facility uh, is eager to be international. They are eager to be international. They is the what I say. They accept the beam proposal, uh, like an English proposal accept. So uh, Asian people now I think are doing many many kinds of science and the related battery. So probably it is possible to uh, obviously possible to uh, submit a proposal in all of them. Sometimes in China, sometimes in Japan, Australia, in Indonesia, so on. And the what was your last question? <laughs> Sorry. About the combination of uh, the structure and then imaging. Oh, okay. Yes, how, how, yeah. yeah. So we can see both. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Actually, the uh, Raden, that is the imaging instrument in Japan, uh, like a JPAC, it's uh, mostly concentrated on imaging, but uh, uh, the various, what I say, uh, challenging the various field of imaging. But here, in the, they are speed up to construct the imaging, that is by 20, 2023. And then it's uh, not only imaging, but also diffraction. So there's a uh, structure analysis combined with imaging, they are thinking about. And you you know, Tan uh, uh, Jijian, probably you met, uh, the, he's involved in, in the, the project. So he's a diffractionist or crystallographer. So probably we do something combination of those kinds of things, yes. So okay. important thing is, uh, talk about uh, many kinds of things. And then that kind of requirement from users or what I say, people is very important to feedback to the people in the facility side. It is very important. Okay, thank you very much.